what, what surveying is, just to, to make sure everybody's clear, what we're trying to do here is prove or validate that the uh, heat heating technology, the furnace or the oven, is providing the accurate temperature uh, and a uniform temperature, so it's stable through the process or over a period of time that you're doing your heat treatment. Uh, and what we're trying to do is to give evidence to the fact that we're able to test that and to prove that it's meeting the requirements. Now, Correct. when we talk about surveying, we there's two key uh, standards we need to apply to. Uh, in automotive, we obviously referring to the CQI 9 standard. And for aerospace, we're talking about the AMS 2750 and, and the new revision F that's come out this year. So what we're trying to do is in the volume of the furnace, and if we're talking about a batch furnace, that's generally, in most cases, uh, a cube in, in form. What we're doing is we're, we're measuring over the working volume of the furnace, the cavity of the furnace, using thermocouples to make sure that we are achieving the correct set point temperature that we're using for our heat treatment process, and that that temperature is within a tolerance band that is specified by the standard, but it, it's also stable because it's sure. no good being close to that uh, within tolerance for a short period and then coming out of tolerance and going back in. It needs to be right. stable over the designated period of time for the survey that you're performing. Correct, correct. Okay. So. Uh, just uh, just to clarify, today we're going to discuss surveying according to CQI-9 and 2750. All right, okay. let's, let's move on. So uh, there's basically two ways to achieve this depending on the furnace that you have. For batch furnaces, you, we usually use an external data logger. We install the thermocouples and all the volume of the furnace, and then we pull those thermocouples out and then uh, hook to the data logger. But sometimes when we have a continuous furnace, uh, we, that's a little bit difficult because we have product moving, we, have, we also have uh, doors closing. So probably tr the trailing thermocouples are not the best idea, right? So we, we can, there, there's two ways to do this. Okay. You could take over my presentation, Victor. You're doing a very good job. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no that's, that's, I'm fine. Um, excellent. Um, yes, as, as Victor's quite quite correctly stated, uh, the, the, the traditional way of doing a survey is generally with an external data logger outside of the furnace. Particularly if it's a batch process, that's probably uh, the most economic and efficient way of doing it. And it's been the methodology that's applied for many, many years and will be for many years to come, I believe. Correct. But in some unique situations, particularly where there's product movement, and if we take the case of the aluminum solution heat treatment, uh, generally, we're talking about a semi-continuous or a continuous process, okay? Now, whenever you, you um, combine trailing thermocouples with any product movement or any, uh, any instrumentation with closing doors or seals or anything like that, that becomes a challenge, okay? And particularly with modern furnaces, as we'll talk about later on, where there's robotic loading of products, where there's single chambers, where you're moving the product from chamber to chamber, uh, a trailing thermocouple may, in some circumstances, even be impossible to use. Right. So that's where the through process technology comes in. Because the barrier is traveling with the product in the product basket, everything is contained. So it can travel from one section to another without any risk of things getting tangled, getting caught up. Now, the big question people will ask is, but don't I need live data to do a, a survey. I don't know, I need to know what the temperature is inside the furnace. Uh, and with a trailing thermocouple, that, that, that's possible because you're connecting the thermocouple to the data log and there's generally a display or a PC monitor where you can see the data. For the through process technology, obviously because we're, uh, we're separated from the outside, how do you get the data out? Well, the, the way that that is achieved is by using radio telemetry. So it is possible you probably can just about see on this slide, there's a little receiver unit here. 
the data logger can be fitted with an RF telemetry uh, system whereby the, the data that's being measured is transmitted by radio waves to these, these receivers outside the furnace, and they then give you that live data on your computer. So you can do your survey in real time in the same way with the, as you could with the trailing thermocouple, but obviously with the safety and the ease of use of the, the system traveling through. And if we consider the situation that in our application we're talking about today, where we're going from the solutionizing furnace to the quench and then the annealing furnace, there's no way you could do that with a trailing thermocouple. The only, only way you can do that is by having something that is able to transfer from one process to the next in sequence. Correct. Okay. Correct. So uh, the nice thing about this, uh, this uh, particular talk today is that we are going to discuss how we should do this, how we should run this testing according to the most common specifications in the industry. Uh, uh, the, the reason we wanted to have this discussion live is because most of the findings both on CQI9 and, and NATC about it come from pyrometry testing because the reality is that we don't pay attention in how these surveys or these tests should be running. Uh, again, I get the question. So should I put the, the thermocouples inside the part? No, you shouldn't. That's a non-conformity. So that's exactly why we're having the discussion today. So you don't have any finding on your future audits. So please, let's discuss about CQI-9 first. Okay, uh, so CQI-9, uh, obviously the biggest challenge with CQI-9 and AMS-2750 is that they are very detailed specifications, Correct. right? Now, if I was to go through this specification in detail, we'd be here for a week and a half, I think. But so yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you a, an over, a top level view, but give you some guidance as to where to look or what to do and what considerations you need to make. So if we take the CQI-9 standard, first of all, obviously remember this is uh, focused on automotive. One interesting thing about the CQI-9 standard is that in addition to the actual survey requirements, there are what they refer to as process tables. And they are application specific. So they give you con clear, concise details as to what you need to monitor for the application you're performing. OK, now, in the case of aluminium heat treating, uh, solutionizing, we're looking at the uh, process table C. So be careful that you pick out the right table in there. But if we look at specifically the surveying requirements, that's basically listed on this slide. The frequency of the survey is uh, required at a quarterly basis. And both for the solution furnace and the aging furnace, the tolerance for the survey is identical. It needs to be within plus or minus five degrees Celsius of the set point temperature you're monitoring against. Um, the, the test set points need to be the minimum maximum operating range of the process. So in the case of the aluminum solution heat treatment, it'll be generally the set point of the furnace to achieve the uh, close to the 500 degrees that you're operating at to get the solutionizing uh, process or 200 degrees in the age, uh, artificial aging furnace. The measurements uh, zone is a minimum of 30 minutes and you need to sample at at least every 30 seconds, if not quicker, okay? Um, an important thing, and this is where you have to be a little bit careful about your own specific uh, application and your own setup, the furnace parameters need to replicate what you would be normally using for normal production for, for the manufacturing steps. So make sure you're comparing like for like. It's no good doing a survey at different uh, operating conditions and environments and, and steps to uh, the production because that, that's not giving you a true reflection of what's happening in the real life, okay? Um, if, the, if the furnace is empty, you must do it, uh, the, the system on, on an empty furnace. If it's loaded, you do it on a loaded furnace. And the important thing is whatever you choose, you then use the same conditions going forward for subsequent uh, tusses that you're going to perform, okay? Correct. Okay. The actual device that you're using for your survey, obviously there are strict calibration requirements uh, for the CQI-9 standard. You need to calibrate the logger at a minimum of every 12 months. Uh, more frequently is, is obviously uh, recommended if possible. It gives you more confidence. 
and the calibration accuracy for the device has to be plus or minus 0 0.6 degrees Celsius or 1% of the reading, whichever is the, the greater value of the two, okay?